Hello, everyone. Welcome to our section. Yeah, welcome. Oh, thank you. So, welcome, everyone. Um, session for today is called Kiverno and Production and Deep Dive. Uh, we will be two co presenters on stage today. So, please let us introduce ourselves briefly and we can look at the session agenda and start the talk. So my name is Charles-Edouard Bretéché. Uh, I've been a Kiverno maintainer for one year and a half now. Uh, I recently joined Yamata, the company that created and open sourced Kiverno. So since then, working on Kiverno has been my full-time job. And you can contact me on GitHub or, li or LinkedIn under the Edit Charlie nickname. It's a little bit inconvenient. I apologize for that. We will get more. <coughs> we can go more fluent afterwards. <coughs> My name is Jing Hong Ban Hot. I'm the chief cloud architect and product owner from Saxo Bank. I'm also one of the organizers from Cloud Native Copenhagen Meetup Group. So if you have a good talks, please contact me in LinkedIn, and that's also my handle for for GitHub there. For today's section, we have packed agenda for you. So in the beginning, Shao Edward will give you guys a great intro on Kivono, what it is and what can you use it for. Afterwards, I will talk about the use case we have for Saxo Bank and Velox. And we end up with Shao Edward bring you guys to some advanced features uh, Kivono going to come in the coming weeks. Thanks, Jinon. So we're going to start with a Kiverno introduction, but first I'd like to recall why we need a policy engine. So why do we need a policy engine? Uh, fortunately, there are a lot of good answers to that question. So the first good answer should be for security reasons and to ensure that, for example, containers don't run as roots in a cluster or to prevent uh, improperly signed container images or things like this. Uh, another good reason would be to enable collaboration and multi-tenancy inside the cluster. And I think Genome will talk about that uh, in more details later. Or it could be used to implement a sort of con cost control system to prevent every service to allocate a new load balancer or things like this, or to validate pod CPU and memory requests or these kind of things. And it probably can be used for plenty of other things too, just because every company will want to validate and enforce different things. So uh, policy engine, uh, be quickly becomes necessary at this point. And <coughs> it's exactly what Kiverno is and does. So Kiverno is an open source Kubernetes native policy engine. It allows you to create, validate, and enforce policies for a cluster. Um, the advantage of Kiverno is that it doesn't require any specific programming language to create policies. So it's usually considered very easy to use. All policies are completely declarative and created from standard YAML syntax. Uh, in this sense, then can easily be, be managed and version controlled like any other code. So this makes Kiverno a very GitOps friendly tool in the end. Uh, if we look at it a bit deeper, Kiverno currently supports five types of, of policies. We have the validation and image verification policies that can be used to validate and verify resource content. We have uh, generation policies that can be used to automatically create additional resources in a cluster when something happens. We have mutation policies that can modify resources on the fly while they are being admitted by the API server. And we have since Kiverno 1.9 a new kind of policy, which is the cleanup policy, 
that can be used to delete periodically resources in a cluster based on certain conditions. So that's basically the five policy types Kiverno supports. And if we look at it a little deeper again, uh, this is what Kiverno architecture looks like. So we have in the rectangle at the middle of the screen the various Kiverno components and on top of the screen the API server admission chain. So we can see that the API server offers two extension points in the mutating and validating admission webhook phases. So the first job Kiverno has to do is to configure those webhooks based on the policies installed in the cluster. So this is what the webhook controller does, constantly, constantly watching policies and configuring the webhooks. Then at this point, uh, every admission request that matches the webhook configuration should be transmitted to the Kiverno webhook which in turn will invoke the Kiverno engine and evaluate all relevant policies against the resource being admitted by the API server. So based on that, the webhook will be able to take a decision to accept or reject a request and eventually return JSON patches if there is a mutation policy installed in the cluster. We can also observe <coughs> two other components the report and background controllers, but they are not directly related to the admission phase in Kiverno. The report controller maintains reports inside the cluster while the background controller is responsible of generation policies and mutating existing resources. So before we look at a concrete demo, uh, we can look at what a policy looks like in Kiverno. So the first thing we can note is that it's very similar to uh, any Kubernetes resource. We have an API version, a kind, which in this case is a Kiverno.io slash v1 and the cluster policy. So the policy applies to the whole cluster and not just a specific namespace. After that, we have a metadata section like most of Kubernetes resources, which, uh, which has a name but it could have labels, annotations, on our references and things like this. Then comes the spec, which is the, the policy itself. The validation failure action is set to enforce, which means that a resource uh, violating this policy will be rejected. Uh, we could have set it to audit the policy. The resource would have been accepted, but the violation would be recorded in a, in a report. The background true indicates that this policy applies to background scan. And finally comes the rules, which is uh, the logic of the policy and how we are going to validate, mutate, and process the incoming resource. So every rule is identified by a name. So this one is require team. Then it starts with a match statement and the match statement indicates what this rule will be interested in. So in this case, this is a rule to validate pods. And finally, the validate section contains the pattern that we are going to validate uh, when admitting a pod. And in this case, we are going to require that metadata.labels.team is a non-empty string. So every pod being submitted will have, we'll need to have a team label and this team label should contain something. And we can illustrate that with a quick demo. This works too. Oh, thank you. <coughs> so we have a, a cluster installed locally and we deployed Kiverno in it. So Sorry. So we can see that the, Kiver uh, the Kiverno pods are running. If we look at the. Can you make it bigger? 
if we look at the, at the webhook configuration, currently there's no policy installed. So Kiverno created the webhook configuration, but for now it's still empty. So as soon as we create a policy in the cluster, uh, Kiverno and the webhook controller we talked about earlier should <coughs> pick that and configure the webhook. So it's exactly what happened right there. Uh, we are going to start receiving uh, admission reviews for replication controllers, pods, uh, daemon set, deployment, and, and so on. So since then, uh, if we try to create a pod without the TIB label, the Kiverno engine should catch that and reject the request because of the policy we just created above. So if I try this, I okay, I uh, I can observe that Kiverno actually rejected the pod creation. We have the error message we put in the policy and the um, and the pod is not created in the cluster. So to get this pod created correctly, we can do the same thing, but this time we have the team label. The team label is just set to my team. And with this one, uh, everything should pass fine. Okay, so that's the difference and that's the way a policy can validate a specific label on the resource. And of course it works with every, every resource. So that's almost it for the introduction. Um, the last thing I wanted to note is that Kiverno is more than just an admission webhook. Uh, we looked at the admission part, but it also generates reports in the background for all resources, not just the resources that were creating, created after a policy was installed. It creates events in the cluster corresponding to detected violations. It can run offline with the help of the Kiverno CLI, and it's a perfect candidate to evaluate uh, resources against policies in CI pipelines. Uh, you can visualize violations in real time with an, an optional component, which is policy reporter. And there's a large policy catalog available to accelerate Kiverno adoption. But Jinong will talk about that later. <coughs> yes, later is now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <coughs> just a quick one. How many of you running Kubernetes in production? And please keep the hands up. Oh my God, I love it. And how many of you, please keep, keep the hands up. <laughs> how many of you runs Kimono in production? Great, then you will learn something today. Might be useful. At the Saxo Bank, we do, we run Kimono and the Kubernetes in production. Same for goes to my previous employer, Velox. And why did we pick Kimono out of all other policy engines in the market? I've heard people asking me, why didn't you pick open policy agent? They, are, they have been around for a longer time and then they can work also outside of cluster. <coughs> I also uh, having people asking me, how about the VAP, the new, the new kid in the blog, <coughs> the validating admission policies uh, introduced in 1.26 Kubernetes release. So let's take on the, the later one first. VAP only covers a subset of se uh, secure, it makes an echo, let me reposition myself. Um, it only covers a subset of features we, uh, uh, we desire from Kivono. Um, as the name implies, it only validates and we use Kivono for more. Uh, f as, uh, for, as of open policy agent, open policy agent is very powerful. You can use for many things, but the use case we have again exceed, or at least it, you need to jump a couple hoops if, if you want to implement that using OPA. For that, I will deep dive later on. <coughs> but why Kivono? 
Kivono has many great features where Shah Edward already outlined a few earlier. For us, there are three of them are super important. First of all, there's no new language required. Everything looks like everything else in Kubernetes. Second of all, it comes with the extensive policy libraries. We don't need to write everything from scratch. The last one is the most important one. It has a strong community support. Last time I checked, it was over 1.3 billion downloads of Kivono. So there's a huge amount of your space out there. <clears throat> because of the, the uh, wild adoption and the strong community, therefore we pick Kivono as our sec uh, security policy engine running in Kubernetes. So how do we do that? If it comes, yes. First of all, we utilize the out-of-box uh, policies. There are many policies that are not only written by the maintainers like Shah Edward, but also with everyone else in the community who just the u end user of Kivono. And second of all, we use that uh, for poly uh, process automation. Many enterprise companies, and, or when you're at a certain size with a security mindset, you will have, for example, private container registries that will require you to have image pool secret to be distributed into different uh, or all namespaces. <coughs> And we don't want to do that by ourselves, right? We need to automate, automate, and automate. Kivono can help us with things like that. Thirdly, additional security enforcement. So on top of on the base, security and best practices policies come with the Kivono. You can write your own additional ones. For example, on the, utilize the image verification, image signature verification feature of Kivono that that's a very low hanging fruit to get to add another layer of super important <laughs> security enforcement to your tech stack. And later I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now I'm gonna share some of my favorite feature of Kivono. First of all, multi-talency. As we adopt um, GitOps, there are many things we need to do when we adopt a new team or new talent in GitOps world. So for example, the um, uh, RBAC access for the serv uh, service account or access for each team, um, the resource quota for each namespace, all of those, it's a bundle. So do you want to create them one by one? Probably not. So Kivono can be a perfect candidate for doing things like that. Of course, you can also define your own helm chart every time when there's new namespace, you can distribute the helm chart. Second of all, for resource management. I mentioned before you can use uh, Kivono to automatic, automatically create image pool secret, but Kivono can do much more than that. Kivono has a mutation um, webhook, where it means you can change the resource into something which could not quite look like that. And if you probably only want to utilize the original uh, property, some of the property, you want to add some additional property to that. One of our use case was when we were adopting um, a massive chart uh, due, to the, due to the version change, one and uh, the secret generated by one component cannot be directly fed into another component. Uh, the format was, has been changed due to the version change. But this is a GitOps world, so we cannot do manual change in, in the environment. So instead, we use Kivono to do the trick uh, to fill up the gaps, to mutate uh, the resource generated by component A and fed into component, uh, component D. The <coughs> third thing is resource validation. So you can use Kivono to validate many different kinds of resources, config map, uh, um, deployment of pods, various things. But for us, the highest value comes to um, pod disruption budget validation. So I don't know how many of you have had a bad experience like us that a misconfigured pod disruption budget could hold a whole, pod, a whole node from upgrading. Because it, that's only, for example, if they set the minimum available to one, and then there's only one replica. So what you gonna do? <laughs> you hold the node and don't want to let go. Um, in those situations, it's much easier just to configure Kivono and then look at the deployment and say you shall not pass because you are misconfigured. 
The last thing is image secret, uh, signature verification. So if yeah, so Kimono, if I if I said it correctly, behind the scene using cosign for doing the image signature verification. Um, because yeah, that's how I see the parameters are configured, <laughs> which for match now, yes. for now, yes, yeah. This is actually something I'm going to demo, so I, I'd much rather spend more time on preparing the environment. Um, but before the demo, maybe it's easier if, if I talk about the setup first. The left side is that I use cosine to generate uh, a key and put it into Azure Key Vault. And it doesn't have to be Azure Key Vault, it can be any secret vault that cosine support. You can also put it just locally if you want to. Um, and then after that, I use that key to sign an image and put it into a container registry. It happened to be Azure Container Registry. <laughs> well, Denmark, uh, we had so much uh, Microsoft House <laughs> as today. <laughs> and during today's demo, the Kivono running inside Kubernetes. So hopefully retrieve the key from Azure Key Vault uh, to validate uh, if the image is, is um, has the correct image signature or not. Uh, and if the image has it, uh, it should let it pass. Otherwise, it should stop it. Now let me try it. Yeah, yeah, it works. Cool, so first of all, maybe I should delete to clean the, the I'm not very good at multitasking, I'm apologize. <laughs> what type I can't speak. So again, the existing con, um, the po cluster policy, by the way, C-P-O-L, um, the full name is cluster policy. In Kivono, they have a policy and a cluster policy. The cluster policy affects the whole cluster. <laughs> Yes, so first of all, let's quickly look at the setup. So I have this policy. That's the name, and then that's what we wanted to do. You should look at an image reference saying if there's any image coming from this path, I should use this public key up down here to validate it. And this public key right now sits in <coughs> great. It's in my presentation, and I need to zoom out here. This is the key I try to read from a name. I got two images, one called a bad busy. Obviously, it's bad because it hasn't been signed. And then the other one, it's called good busy. It has been signed, and then you can see the image signature is indicated by the shah hash here. So now let's go back here. So all I need to do now is to apply this cluster policy. One thing to remember though, because we are reading stuff from private uh, key vault and private uh, container registry. So when you apply things like that, you should remember to, during the Kivono deployment, you need to specify what image pool secret you can use and the, what kind of like credential you can use to fetch the, the secret which is in the cosine key. So let's get to it. If I now apply it, just double check. Yes, it still connect to the high speed uh, mobile, mobile internet. Okay, apply. So now I can see the cluster policy is in place. And you can see it's not running in the background and it has in force action so if anything's bad you will stop it so let's run a bad busy first you can see it's coming from the registry which is being monitored the performance by the way will be tuned in the coming upcoming <laughs> release 1.10 Shah Edward promised me that uh, there will be a specific uh, um, flag you can set uh, in here in extra argument uh, to speed up in the process. Then it knows which cloud provider to use. <coughs> so you can see there's no matching signature for this bad PC. Now I really hope when I run good PC, it will pass.
you can start thinking about the questions later you're going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not awkward silence. Yay, it's great. I thought there would be a clap for things like that. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are so lovely. <laughs> Where is next? Okay. It won't be long, I promise. Now three learnings I try to I want to share with you guys before I hand over to to Shah Edward. First of all, take advantage of the recommended policies. Don't reinvent the wheel, but use it uh, as a base and customize it into your organization need. It has saved us a lot of time. <laughs> Second of all, start with a validation failure action audit. If you start with the enforce, your developer gonna hate you and you don't <laughs> want that. <laughs> yeah, take one or two audit it, uh, fix the warnings, and then document it, uh, share with other teams and enforce them. Developer experience. The last thing is about migration. If you have OPA uh, rules, you want to uh, migrate one to one into Kivono, it might be a tough job because you might have a lot of uh, complex rule in place. Try to see from Kivono's perspective, how can you utilize, because there are quite a few things Kivono can do, OPA can't. So we have had our learnings that just see it not just as um, migration, but a transformation using a new way to manage a Kubernetes native way to manage your security um, policy engine. Okay, this is all the toothbrush, but I promise it will be fun. So this comes with uh, within the question I had before. Some people, they disqualified uh, Kivono because it cannot run outside of Kubernetes. Um, I'm just thinking, everybody has toothbrush. And uh, every morning when you're standing in your toilet, uh, in your bathroom, and then you look at toothbrush, and then you look down to your toilet. Technically, it is a toothbrush. Uh, it is a brush. Will you use it there? <laughs> so do one thing and do it well. Thank you. We have a little bit more, by the way, if you want to see the advanced feature. So I think we have a couple of minutes left. So we can go quickly um, through <coughs> the last part of the presentation, which covers unreleased feature yet. That should come in properly. That should come in for some of them in 110, which should be available approximately next week. And the last feature will probably start being implemented in 111, so it's not really 110, but it's a significant change, so uh, it makes sense to talk about that because it's in our roadmap. So the first coming feature is the support for Notary V2. Jinong mentioned cosine, so um, today we only support cosine, and with 110, it will be the first time we support another technology for image signature verification. Um, so the differences are Notary uses the new OCI uh, artifacts and referrers API, so it's very different from what cosine does and probably cosine will follow at some point because it's very it offers a lot of advantages um, the downside is it's not supported everywhere yet even if it's part of the oci standard uh, different registry have to implement it uh, fortunately ecr acr and docker hub support it and there's no keyless signature in notary so keyless signature signature is only for cosine uh, you can see the auras discover call 
uh, here and we can see that there's a new uh, reserve tag <coughs> that can reference a layer uh, that contains the signature signature so in practice it looks like this you can uh, create a policy which has a um, the notary v2 type so it looks like uh, cosine policies you have an image reference that you can use to target images mm -hmm. you oh I can do that Oof. <laughs> better oh uh, So yes, the type notary v2 is here. Uh, the image reference uh, is uh, at the same place that it was before. And you have the same set of attestors, but this time you have to provide a certificate because uh, there's no keyless signing. So I have a cluster running the latest main uh, locally. So if we deploy such a <coughs> image in the such a policy in the cluster uh, we can now try to create a pod based on the image above so there's one tag unsigned in the registry and this one should be rejected okay and it was rejected because uh, we failed to verify the signature uh, of the image and we can do the same with a sign tag so and this time uh, it should work okay so it worked uh, <laughs> So yes, it's still initial support and for now we are supporting only the signature verification but we are working on supporting attestations too. So it will be the next step. Uh, another feature that will be in 1.9, it's uh, Kiverno will now be able to call different services in, uh, uh, inside the cluster and it looks like this. So you can now have an API call in the context. Uh, it supports GET and POST, it supports HTTP and HTTPS protocols. And in the end, uh, the, the payload has to be JSON and the response will may be made available in the context. So in this case, for example, we are calling a service and this service uh, and the response from the service is used in the conditions of a deny to enable or disable uh, the accept or reject the request. We often uh, people that say, why don't you support a programming language in policies? Um, this is potentially an answer because uh, you can create your service and call the service from the policy. And the last one, very quickly, uh, it won't be in 110, potentially in 111, is about the validating admission policies uh, that are in alpha uh, in Kubernetes now. So we have implemented uh, validating admission policies in the CLI, so we can already use the CLI with validating admission policies. Uh, there are a couple of challenges because traditionally Kiverno has always been a webhook. So m migrating to validating admission policies um, has some challenges like how do we create events when something happens. Uh, on the reporting side, it looks like we can do uh, the same as in the API server, so it's not a problem. But what if your rule needs to call a service or things like this? It's not currently possible with validating admission policies. But we are convinced it will improve over time. So uh, we are working on it. We don't have any release date yet, but uh, I'm sure it will come. 
And that's it. I think we're at the end. So if you have questions.